You're watching The Betrothal Guys. This is my longtime friend Barrett, and I'm Joshua. How much contact is appropriate in a betrothal? And I would say that that depends on the couple. They can decide. Um, they can defer to their parents. Um, Which is not, not usually a bad idea. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Uh, like Yeshua, he says that no man knoweth the day or the hour that he's coming. Uh, only the Father in heaven knows. You know, and so that's kind of an idea of, you know, um, if we would do the same thing with our relationship, our betrothals, we would, uh, even though we're technically the head of our wife at that time, we still submit to our father's authority. We uh, still honor our father yeah, and mother. Yeah, That's exactly. still in the commandments, yeah, whether exactly. you're married or not. Right, exactly. So your father is still the one telling you when you can go get her. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I would say I would submit to what uh, the parents decide on contact also. That, that's a good uh, a good starting point. Uh, a lot of people have parents that say, "Well, whatever. I mean, it's up to you." Um, so, what would be a good a, what would you recommend for somebody? Because we're assuming that this couple they don't really know what, what different actions are going to bring up if they do them or don't do them. Right? Is it going to look bad? Is it going to look good? What what kind of recommendations would you make for the couples for the parents to even recommend? Yeah, I would, I mean, if it were my son or daughter, I would probably personally be okay with holding hands, um, probably not kissing. Yeah. Um, I, maybe a hug, you know, like if you're, like, because a lot of times in our situations, uh, the groom goes away for a long time and they don't see each other. I, I wouldn't. I, I don't have a problem with them hugging at that point, you know, because he's saying goodbye or whatever, and, and she's not going to see him until uh, the marriage supper. So I, I wouldn't have a problem with the hug. But I don't want them to be, like, constantly all over each other. You know? <laughs> it's, it, it's easy to get there once you start falling in love. Yeah. And you know that you're husband and wife. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that holding hands is a good way to start that uh, start that physical intimacy. It can be a... a, a uh, valuable thing in in some of these cases where because during the betrothal if you're getting betrothed before you start the romantic attachment a lot of times that romantic attachment is at as is at a uh, less high level than what we see in a lot of cases right. so uh, holding hands can actually assure, assure each other that this actually this is actually a f relationship that's going to make us feel good we're actually going to enjoy this yeah um being together well, it encourages the romantic side of things without getting out of control. Yeah, and so I, I recommend that that one is one that you could definitely allow. I know a lot of people, if you're going to and here's another thing, if your betrothal is going to be short, then more contact is not going to be as damaging. If you have a long betrothal, then you may want to limit it longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's hard to go back from something that you've already allowed. Much easier to add something new that you mm -hmm. can do. Mm-hmm. Husband and wife in the Bible, when it talks about husbands love your wives, it's that's happened. That's talking about during the betrothal period. It even uses Christ in the church as an example, also during the betrothal period. Husbands love your wives. So then you have in First Corinthians where it actually talks about um, not denying physical touch and more to a husband or wife. That actually does apply during the betrothal period. Um, authority over each other's bodies actually passes when you become husband and wife. Um, now, if you just run right out and consummate the marriage, then it's no longer a betrothal. And I don't recommend that. I, I, like Barrett said, I think you should honor your father and mother in that uh, setting that time frame. It is a good time to pray and fast, like Paul even says in 1 Corinthians, and limit your physical contact. <clears throat> um, you should decide what that limit is going to be and you should, whatever you do, you absolutely must, whatever you decide, do not breach what you've decided as the rules between the two of you. Yeah. Because if, if you do, you break trust in a way that is very, very hard to ever get back. It, it could take years, honestly. Do not break the rules that you make. So be careful with the rules that you make. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Even the end of 1 Corinthians 7, where it talks about... Uh, um, go ahead and let them marry. They've not sinned. It's better to marry than to burn. Um, 
all those other things that are in First Corinthians seven actually apply here. If it's getting too hard and you and this just needs to to happen, it's not sin. You can go ahead and consummate the marriage and get married. Um, go ahead and make it public that you've done so, so that you don't have all these questions of why is she pregnant? Uh, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead and uh, and uh, and make it a real marriage. If you need to do that, go ahead and do that. It, yeah. it, that is one of the reasons for marriage is, is to avoid those temptations of fornication. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>